Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside for today. It seems like every time I step in this little patch of timber, the wind is howling and it's cold, but I'm still out today to talk about cheap versus expensive camo clothing, and is it really worth it to spend the money on something like Sitka or First Light or Kuyu, or should you just stick with the old Walmart special and enjoy the hunt that way? So for many, many years, I was a pack on the lairs, hoodies and sweatpants and thick socks and everything, and I still froze to death, even in the mid to late archery season when we only see temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Now, a lot of my research and a lot of my time spent in the woods is during archery season and I live here in Pennsylvania. We get well below freezing temps there end of October, beginning of November when our archery season is open. So I needed something a little bit warmer and I'm glad that I got it. So I'm a big guy, I'm used to being outside, I'm used to the cold weather, but you stick me in a tree stand for three, four, five, six hours and it starts to have the wind blown, it's snowing, or if there's any type of precipitation at all, I'll start to freeze out quick. So I'm really thankful that I have a system now that actually can keep me warm. But does that mean that I needed it? Could I have just stuck with the regular Walmart special, Dick Sporting Goods, Field and Stream, Redhead, Bass Pro, Cabela's, that sort of stuff? Or did I really need to jump up in price point to really keep me comfortable in the woods? So first things first for me, this is a godsend. I get cold relatively quickly. I'm a big guy. I got a lot of area for my heart to pump my blood through. I know that sounds a little too scientific, but it is true. If you're not keeping your core warm and keeping this part where the vast majority of your uh, large arteries and veins are, your blood's going to start pumping through your system a little bit cooler and you're going to get colder faster, in particular if you have long arms and legs like I do. So let's start with the cheaper camo first. So this is just a cheap game hide uh, jacket that you can get at Walmart, Mossy Oak Camo, and it's built just like you would expect a jacket to be built. It has, you know, some pockets in the front here it has hand pockets on the side standard zipper has some buttons on the cuffs and it has a little bit of a quilt lining on the inside but not a whole lot of thermal insulation also there is no wind barrier or precipitation barrier whatsoever now right now it's in the mid to low 30s we have a good 10 15 20 mile an hour wind at some points and I can feel it I can feel it coming through me I'm only wearing a t-shirt underneath this and I have nothing on my sleeves I can feel that breeze now for me up and about and moving right now it's not not a problem but when I'm sitting on stand and I'm stuck 15 20 feet in the air in a tree stand that wind will start to permeate and I'll start to get cold in a hurry I'm a strong believer if you're not gonna stop the wind with some sort of membrane something to keep that wind from blowing through you and taking your warm air your warm thermal insulation that you're trying to build up inside your clothing you're gonna get cold so you can pack on as many layers as you want but if they're gonna breathe and allow your warm air to escape you're gonna get cold and you're gonna get colder probably faster than you want to now, particularly here in Pennsylvania during the rifle season, during that December time frame, it gets bitter cold. Uh, last year or two years ago, I was hunting in negative temps, definitely negative teens with wind chill. You do not want to be wearing a very thin thermal break when it comes to those kind of temperatures. Now, if you live in the south or if you live in an area where it does not receive that kind of temperature, then you might be able to get away with something like this. Now, of course, the price point anybody can get away with it, right? You're spending 40, 50 bucks on a coat. You don't feel too bad. Just pack on the layers and be done with it. But let me throw on the Sika jacket and talk specifically about why I'm so happy I have this system and also why this jacket is just built better. Forget the whole cold thing. It's also just built better. It's built more specifically for a hunter and particularly me, a bow hunter. All right, even in the few brief seconds of me having this on here, I don't feel any wind permeating this jacket, which is awesome. Now, this is built as it claims on here with a wind stopper from Gore-Tex. I don't know if it has some sort of membrane in it, but I can't feel it. And I've been hunting out of this jacket now for two years in well below freezing temps. I've arrowed a couple of deer out of this jacket. It is a fantastic system. Plenty of movement. It's built to designed for, in particularly bow hunters, to have a lot of range of motion. You can lift your arms above your head. It's not going to hike your jacket clear up past your belly button. It gives you a lot of good movement and motion. Now, also, this zipper, a lot of people have asked me weird questions or, or asked the question about this weird zippers built at an angle. And if you're unfamiliar with Sitka or any other type of major manufacturer that's done something like this, this is to keep this hand muff, which is superb, in the front completely intact. So with the cheaper jacket, you have uh, the pockets, but they're separated by the zipper. In something like this, you have a full hand muff that's not broken up by a zipper. So now you can stick one hand warmer or two hand warmers if you're really that 
that cold right into this muff. It's very fleece lined, it's very warm on the inside, and now your hands are connected. They're not separate, which would make them get colder a little bit faster. Also, with the zipper being at an angle, you can get it either from left hip to right shoulder or from right hip to left shoulder, and that would help dictate if you're a left or right-handed archer. So with this coming up now and the zip being out of this way, now this tag and all these zipper parts and the part of the collar are not in my way if I'm going to draw the bow. Same thing if I was left-handed. Now the zipper would be coming up this way, it would put the collar on this side, and it won't be in the way of the string. Same thing's true if I unzip it a little bit. I can fold it back out of the way, and now this is not going to come in contact. If I was to open a traditional jacket, it would sit right here. But now that it's at an angle, this corner is back, this corner can lay flat, and now the arrow and the string have a perfectly clear path to fly through. In conjunction with all the other things I just mentioned, you have other pockets which just kind of make more sense in their location and their design than a standard jacket you would get at a big box store. For example, this pocket right here is meant to be for a grunt tube. Now I'll either put a grunt tube, or in this case, I have a little pill bottle full of milkweed. That's just easy access. You can reach it right there, use the grunt tube, slide it right back in, and you're ready to shoot or continue on with the hunt. Secondly here, you have another pocket. I'll put my phone in here. Maybe I'll just stash a glove in there real quick. But also, it's built with a magnet system. There is no Velcro. A lot of pockets will either have a loud snap or a loud Velcro flap. These have magnets to them, so they're completely silent. Same thing here on this frontal zipper. You can store stuff down in here you could put extra hand warmers on the outside if you don't want them on the inside of the muff also you'll get more form-fitting sleeves so this sleeve is definitely designed it looks a lot thinner but I can tell you it's a lot warmer than the other system from the cheaper jacket I don't even have to wear a forearm guard even when I pack a layer on underneath I don't have to wear a forearm guard because it will stay completely out of the way shooting my bow my string won't have any chance of hitting it the cuffs are built a little bit softer they're also very tight fitting whereas on a cheaper jacket you might have some cheaper elastic or a button cuff like this one has and you won't get that perfect nice seal and you'll get that cold air going up into your sleeve or down into your glove and that's just uncomfortable over a length of time. Also, I like the fact that all of these pockets up here, including this zippered one right here, which is quite large. This is where I'll commonly just keep my phone because it's nice and warm, but I'll also stick a chest warmer in here because it's right on my sternum. The, all these pockets are at an angle because the zipper's at an angle, and pockets that are on an angle are easier to access, because if you're thinking about this, hold your bow, you don't want to be kind of reaching straight down into a pocket, or kind of straight at it, because stuff might fall out. It's at an angle right here, I can reach in, and I can slide it in a little bit easier. Now, that might seem kind of ridiculous, but it's deliberately planned that way. It's specifically designed for a hunter, thinking what is a hunter going to need in those do or die situations, in those big buck moments, what are they not going to want to be fumbling with? And angled pockets, this angled zipper, this large muff, the ability to stop the wind, it's just a win-win situation. Now, of course, the question is, is the price tag worth it? This jacket is several hundred dollars, and I will say it is totally worth it if you hunt in a cold climate like I do here in Pennsylvania or if you're anywhere else in the Northeast or due north or out in the Midwest where you're really going to see those freezing temps through most of your bow and firearm seasons. Now there are certain parts I don't think are necessary. For example, this is the Fanatic hoodie. This is the Fanatic jacket from Sitka. This is the Fanatic hoodie. This is a very thin, although there is a little bit of thermal layer to it, it's a very thin hoodie. It's great for layering underneath this jacket, but for probably 85% of the bow season here in Pennsylvania, it is way too thin. I would freeze to death, even with like a nice merino wool base layer. For me, it's just not warm enough. So it's great as an undergarment, but it's not great to spend a hundred and some dollars, in my opinion, on just one single undergarment. Now it's built to be tucked in, it has a long uh, backer on the hem, the sleeves are very tight and form fitting, it has thumb holes so you can pull it through the sleeves and not have it get bunched up. It's very well thought out in that way, but personally I don't think it's one hundred and some odd dollars thought out that way. So most of the time under this I'm wearing some sort of flannel or fleece layer 
Uh, this will go on if it's definitely going to be a much colder temperature, teens and 20s and below, particularly with a little bit of wind chill. This is a much more breathable garment. This one uh, it does breathe, but it's not going to let in the wind and let that uh, thermal break leave you and leave you freezing. So something like this is an underlayer or like the early whitetail season garments. If you don't live in a warmer season climate, like in the south or in the lower part of the Midwest, where you can have 60s and 70s be your average bow hunting temperature, I just don't think it's worth it. If you live in a cold weather climate, you're going to want something like this. Yes, it's a hard pill to swallow, but all I need is one jacket because on the bottoms, I do stick to my little own DIY method and I do cheat a little bit. So on the bottoms, I don't feel the need to wear expensive pants. My pants get pretty beat up going through red brush, going through snow, and also if I have a jacket, this is strictly a hunting jacket. I don't do anything else with it. So it's kind of for me. It's a lot of money just to spend on a, a piece of clothing that I only wear for hunting. I like to have my hunting gear or my warm weather clothes be used for a lot of different purposes. So I have purchased a pair, and I've been hunting with them for several years, a pair of Carhartt Arctic bibs. So they're a quilt line bib, have a zip clear up to the knee, full bib, very warm, very comfortable. The only problem with them is they're very loud. That fabric, when you're walking, is loud when it rubs together. So to combat that, I bought a cheap leafy suit. This is from North Mountain Gear, and even though it is a little bit green, I still do wear it even during the late season. The deer don't seem to mind. But since I have a leafy suit, both top and bottom, I can use that in turkey season and in the early season when it is warm outside. So I have multiple clothing garments, multiple different options for way less than if I was to buy an expensive pair of bibs or hunting pants meant for cold weather hunting. I do everything in these bibs. I hunt, I blow snow, I go play with my kids and sled ride. I do everything because they keep me warm. They're co almost completely windproof, very, very close to waterproof, not perfectly, but they're definitely going to keep me dry on a drizzly, cold, snowy day. Wonderful. They're about a hundred bucks, and with all their uses, I can definitely swallow that money. So, on the top, I like to have a specific hunting jacket because I just get all the motions, and this is where all of my gear is stored. This is where everything is, needs to be accessible and smart and warm with this hand muff in particular. But when it comes to the bottoms, I really like having the Carhartt bibs. Sure, they're brown. Yeah, I could probably hunt with them just as they are, but they're a little too loud for me. So I put that leafy suit over top of them, make some dead quiet, and I am cold free, uh, moisture free from any precipitation, and I'm really able to enjoy my hunt. So in summary, get something that's on the top. If you're in a cold season climate like I am in Pennsylvania, save up your money and buy something if you're tired of being cold. Personally, Sitka, I think, is the best option you could have for that. Kuyu and First Light, and there are a couple other brands out there, also make really high quality equipment, but I think that Sitka has really hit it out of the park. Now, this is an older generation jacket. They've also made some upgrades with their more recent uh, models, so you can definitely look into that. They have a, a collar system for their tether. They've changed up some of the locations of the Berber fleece to make it less burr catchy, because I will admit, I do spend a good amount of time picking burrs off, but hey, I'll I'll take picking burrs off in the comfort of my own home after I've been warm and successful on my hunt than having to deal with less Berber, I guess. I don't know. But this system really works for me, and I really strongly recommend if you're tired of being cold that you save up your money, get the jacket, maybe get the pants, if uh, the bibs, if you're tired of being cold on the bottom. Get yourself a nice pair of boots with some toe warmers. Get out there and stay warm and enjoy your hunt. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about Sitka gear that in my experience or anything else related to archery and bow hunting, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. You can even send me an email, and of course, leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and we'll get to see you next time. Let's get inside and get my hands warm. Holy smokes. It is not warm outside.